For 25 years now, June Hunt has been a familiar name and voice to radio audiences worldwide with her award-winning broadcast, Hope for the Heart, birthed out of the biblical counseling ministry she founded. Her numerous books include How to Forgive When You Don't Feel Like It, Keeping Your Cool When Your Anger Is Hot, and How to Rise Above Abuse. She joins us now to discuss her latest book, Hope for the Heart, Finding Strength in Life's Storms. And June, great to have you with us. Oh, it's Welcome. wonderful to be back. <laughs> back, yes. yes. You, you've been here a while back mm -hmm. when you sat and had a conversation with... Probably my dad. Yeah. That's right. You got okay. it. Yeah. Yes. Well, welcome back. Now, um, June, you uh, birthed your biblical counseling ministry over 25 years ago, but backing up well before that, it really came out of, of uh, kind of hope that you were looking for as, as a young child. And maybe just give us some of your background story before we get into the book. Uh, to be very candid, um, I know what it's like to hold on to secrets, uh, family secrets, not talking to anyone uh, about pain. And how do, you, how do you explain that you're actually in a family that's off on the side, your father's married to somebody else, and it just was uh, incredibly hard, and I didn't know how to verbalize about it. Okay, what do you mean? You're in a family off on the side, and your father's married to, to some, somebody else. To, to another woman, not my mother, uh, yet I was a part of the family over here. Actually, my father had another family going on also uh, in, in Atlanta, so I'm from Dallas. And so uh, it you know, I, I didn't, un, I wasn't exposed to authentic Christianity. Uh, you know, God, uh, I, I was in a church, but didn't know about God particularly. Uh, didn't know the character of God, certainly. And and so with with that pain, I, I understand that sense of, for, for people who really, <laughs> want to kill somebody. I, I wanted to kill my dad mm -hmm. when he ended up marrying my mom, but the way he treated her was so hard, so painful. Uh, teenagers are very idealistic. They know what should be. Mm -hmm. The world should be this way. And so they can get very intense and angry when there are people who appear to be successful and yet that success is is not based on reality at home, what you see at home. And my father was highly successful, and so he had all these yes people around him, and I, I had no heart for him. I had unforgiveness toward him, uh, and that's why I wrote the book, How to Forgive When You Don't Feel Like It, because I didn't feel like it. So, you know, it didn't seem logical. And uh, there was a point at which I, uh, I, I remember I was in, in my car, I was, I was a teenager, and I remember thinking, just push the pedal down, just push the pedal down, because I was at an overpass, and I thought the car could go over, just, just for the pain to stop. You know, I, I know people who are suicidal, they don't want to kill themselves. They, they really don't want to kill themselves, but they just want to be gone. They, they want the pain to stop. And, but my concern was, but what if instead I become maimed and, and then I'm a burden? And so um, the truth is there are so many people who've lost hope. They don't have hope. So what is real? W what can you hope in that's legitimate? Because you and I know that there are times when we've hoped for something that is right and it doesn't come about. I mean, it, it's, it would be biblical, if you will. It would be right in God's sight. Well, why doesn't that come about? So how do, you, how do you handle this issue of hope? Because the word hope is heralded as positive and, and uh, we hear always this, oh, you've got to have hope. Mm -hmm. So what do we do when hope doesn't come about when it should? Mm. So, yeah, the, the term hope can, can seem so hard to grasp. It's just mm -hmm. out there <laughs> somewhere. Yeah, I think of it as cloud-like. It's like you're grabbing a cloud, but you can't get a handle on it. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we need hope for our hearts. Now, some, mm -hmm. some would say also there's, uh, there's faith. You've got to have 
faith. And then and faith and hope, maybe they are synonymous mm -hmm. in most people's minds. Maybe, mm -hmm. how would you distinguish that? Well, we have to know that there's a difference because the Bible says there's faith, hope, and love. Mm. The greatest of these is love. So we know there's a distinctive, and uh, you're right, most people don't know the difference. Hope is a, I'll say it this way, guaranteed hope is Christian hope. Christian hope is a guarantee that something will be fulfilled. Now, secular hope is an optimistic hope, an optimistic uh, desire, oh, wish desire, yeah, desire, wishful thinking yeah. that something will be fulfilled. But when you look at the Bible, what, we, what you see is God wants us to know that we have this hope, we can have this hope an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. Mm. So there is a security when you understand what is that Christian hope. Now, the fact is, the hope that the Bible talks about, about the anchor, it's talking about actually the person of Jesus Christ. That once you've humbled your heart, you've received Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, giving Him control of your life, which I eventually did then you've got a security that He gives us. It's not our security, it's His security.